Bright Minds. Today, it's all about telling time. Did you know that every second, minute, and hour we are traveling through time? By the end of this episode, not only will you be able to tell time, but you will also learn some fun facts about it too. Come on, kiddos, let's go! Come join the fun! Telling time is super easy. But before we do that, let's find out what time is. To answer that, think of time as a measure of moments. Just like when you use a ruler to measure how tall you are. Time tells you when to go to school, or also when it's time to eat lunch or to do your homework. It even tells you when you can play too. Time has always been with us. Come along and let's explore how ancient cultures kept track of time long before the invention of watches. In ancient Greece, sundials told time by using the sun's shadow, cast by a stick called a gnomon to mark the hour. Ancient Egypt. Water clocks measured time by the regulated flow of liquid from one vessel to another. Pretty cool, right? Next up is the fire clock. This dragon-shaped incense burner from ancient China measured time by how much incense had burned. The Mayans used detailed observations of the stars and planets to keep time and create calendars. Take a look at this clock here. It has three different hands. Each hand tells us a different part of time. The seconds hand is the fastest moving of all three hands. Every time it goes around once, a minute has passed. And guess what? There are 60 seconds in a minute. The long hand is for telling us minutes. It moves slower than the seconds hand. It takes one minute for the minutes hand to move to the next position. Watch closely, kids. Every 60 seconds, the minutes hand moves. So it takes a total of five minutes for the minutes hand to move from 12 to one. Now, you can get a feeling of what five minutes is. Super dope, right? The next time someone says, I'll be there in five, you can watch your clock and tell if they will be early or not. As mentioned, it takes five minutes for the minute hand to move from number to number. So how many minutes does it take moving from 12 to three? That's right, it takes 15 minutes. In telling time words, 15 minutes is also called a quarter. And do you know how many quarters there are in a clock? A clock is made up of four quarters. Come and let's count together, kids. One. Two. Three. Four. Each time the minute hand completes four quarters, or one full rotation around the clock, an hour has passed. Always remember, there are 60 minutes in an hour. And finally, we have the hour hand. It is the shortest and slowest of all three hands. It takes its time to move from one number to the next. Every time it completes two full circles, a whole day has passed. There are 24 hours in one day. On to you, Sammy, tell us more. Telling the time might seem complicated, but it's really that simple. Let's begin. When the minute hand is between the six and the 12, we say it's to the next hour. When it's between the 12 and the six, we say it's past the hour. For example, if the minute hand is pointing at two and the hour hand is on the four, it means it's 10 minutes past four. We say it's 4.10. Here is another example, kids. If the minute hand is pointing at 10 and the hour hand is pointing at four, it is 10 minutes to four. But we can also say it is 50 minutes past four. So it is 4.50. So what time is it when the minute hand is on eight? Yes, it's 20 minutes to four or it's 4.40. Moving right on to the next kiddos. If the minute's hand is exactly at 12 and the hour hand on any other number, it is that number o'clock. Our clock reads four o'clock. Let's do another one. 
What time is it on our clock? Yes, you are right. It is eight o'clock. Good job, kids. Did you know that time changes depending on where you are? For example, when it's nine in the morning in New York, it's already two in the afternoon in London. Pretty interesting, right? There's more. Also, while you are deep asleep and having adventurous dreams, some kids on Earth are on their way to school. Stick around and let me tell you why. Time is different in different places because the Earth is split into 24 time zones. Imagine the Earth like a big orange cut into 24 slices. Each slice is a time zone. As the Earth spins, every slice experiences a different time of day. As the Earth rotates on its axis, different parts of the world experience day and night at different times. Different time zones are important so that everyone has noon when the sun is approximately at its highest point in the sky above them. We have come to the end of this episode. Always remember that 60 seconds make one minute and 60 minutes make one hour. So every time Earth makes one complete spin on its axis, a full day of 24 hours has passed.